My recent trip to talk with Canadian Mining Hall of Fame inductee Ross Beatty on Bowen Island near Vancouver was a day I will never forget. Ross shared so many wonderful lessons from his storied 40-year career, but sadly not all of them could make the final edit. This story about the difficulties faced by anyone trying to build and operate a gold mine was simply too good to not let it see the light of day. You know, I look at the CEOs of gold mining companies and to me, they're their own worst enemies because they have, they have so much control over <coughs> what happens to the price of their commodity. If they, if they understood what it was. You know, when the gold price is down, you should just, you should reduce your mind. You should, you should, you know, it, they, it becomes just an exercise in, in, yeah. in production cost and sale cost. And if there's, a, if there's a margin, we're going to pump this stuff out of the ground. Right. Which, which I, it's fine if it's copper and it's fine if it's zinc and it's fine if it's nickel. But gold is different. Gold is different. There's absolutely no question. So why I'm building a gold company now, which is probably my last company in my, in my career, it is kind of, I want to go out with gold the way I started with gold. Uh, it's actually the metal that is the easiest for a small company to come to, to build. And part of that is because it's money. Yeah. You, can, you can finance gold deposits more easily than you can finance copper or zinc or lead or any of these other things. Gold is much more broadly found in nature than these other metals. It occurs in many, many small deposits that are very low capital cost to build. All of these things help small companies get going. There's more of them. There's probably 10 or 15 times as many gold mines in the world as there are silver mines. So it's easier to find, easier to bulk up, build bigger companies out of. Um, a typical copper mine might cost a billion to $2 billion to build today. A typical gold mine's one to 200 million. And you can finance those by selling the gold forward, yep. hedging it. You can't do that with any of these other metals. So gold is magical and is special not just as the product you're selling, which is magical and special, but also because of the, where it occurs in the world and how you can finance the, 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 the operation of the company. Um, there's a lot more chances for M&A. It's just, it's just much more, um, uh, much, much easier, and I, I, I say easy with a very much inverted commas, sure. to, to, to build a company out of a gold resource than it is um, a base metal resource or a ferrous metal like, like iron or, or coal. Uh, silver's in the middle. Silver's a bit in the middle because silver is money on one hand. It's also an industrial metal on the other hand, but it's primarily found in nature as a byproduct of yeah. other metals yeah. like copper or zinc or lead or, or gold. So it's much more difficult to find a true silver deposit in the world. Harder to find, but if you can find it and develop it, you're, you're more scarce. Uh, coming back to gold though, uh, the trouble is, you know, and I, and I know this from, from running these, these companies for so long, when you have a tough time, when the metal price goes down, you know what? You're trying to keep that mine alive yep. when it's not making any money. And the only way you can do that is by keeping it running. As soon as you shut it, you have reclamation costs, yep. you have closure costs, you have severance to workers. And, you know, that'll just suck you down. That'll kill you. That'll, that'll bankrupt you. So, you know, these companies... They, they, they try to, or management teams, they try to survive by slicing all the costs they can. They finish doing that, and there's nothing else to slice. Uh, they just have to do something else. And then they say, okay, well, let's maybe combine with another weak company and build two weak companies and maybe reduce our G&A, our overhead costs, and, and, and maybe that works. Uh, or let's try to build another mine and, and offset some of our fixed costs with, with, with greater revenue. I mean, all these things, and, and at the end of the day, they're increasing production, not decreasing production, exactly when they should be reducing production. Right. But it's just easier said than done, Grant. It's no, no, so no, no, hard oh, I'm to sure. do. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a flip comment, because uh, as an investor, know, you kind of it, think, guys, come on. But if, totally, and it makes perfect sense. Reduce supply, price goes up. Increase demand, price goes up, right? Uh, yeah, sorry, price goes down. Or give yourself oh. the ability to pull it out the ground and, and hold on to it. You know, build yourself yeah. a reserve. Yeah. You know, whether yeah. some of these guys, we had a new one start paying dividends linked to the gold price. And, and I, I wonder if, if, if companies will start paying dividends in gold. And th There are things you can do to, to, to ring fence your business from the vagaries of the general market because gold is so different. That, that I just don't see that creativity, that, that thinking that tells me to think in about gold as money as opposed to a commodity. You know, you'd be surprised. There, there is some creativity in that area, but it's, you're stymied by the, the, the forces of darkness that are against you. For example, we tried to do a silver bond, a silver index bond, 
and and we got hammered by the one of the big regulatory groups in the states that treated it as a as a kind of something you had to register, and it was just impossible to do, and super expensive to do. And we just couldn't do it. We wanted to do, it, we couldn't do it. Then uh, we started the silver ETF, which was which was actually. Uh, what did that do? It gave people a lot of uh, a lot easier way to buy physical silver. Well, it hurt equity prices because the equities were trading at a premium then, two or three times any net asset value. Uh, it, and it, that's now one or a point eight even. It's 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 significant. Just on the other hand, the metal price is higher because the ETF has created right. all that demand and and that's increased the price. So uh, I, I think I'd rather have a good income statement than uh, a big market cap. That's right. kind of phony. I think trading at a premium that big is, was ever that logical. Uh, so I think it's a much more honest market today. And the ETF was a good move. Uh, other things, um, you know, this whole streaming business has come about where companies can, can finance by selling chunks of the, of the future value of the, of the deposit. And it's a new innovative thing. Uh, but there are real limits to what you can do to be totally creative set by the government that regulates our world and uh, those are hard forces to beat. 